welcome to the course on evolution of air interface towards 5G. So, till now we have seen the different waveforms and uh, it is high time that we compare their performance against each other. So, that we get a picture of uh, how things would work out and what is the right solution to be picked up. So, uh, till now uh, we have seen various different waveforms like uh, OFDM of course, we have seen its variant then uh, SCFDMA, SCFDE then FBMC, UFMC, GFDM and all these different forms that we have seen. Uh, we have also seen pre-coded GFDM uh, where there was some modification before sending the waveform which gave us performance in terms of uh, lower out of band as well as low PAPR as well as improved BER performance. What remains was low complexity performance. We did not show you the low complexity results, but they are uh, very details and they are available in different papers. So, uh, it is recommended that you can uh, follow those papers to look at the different architectures. We can reduce the complexities especially of uh, GFDM transceiver systems. For other systems, there are other papers which one can easily find out. So, now we get into the discussion on uh, comparison uh, of the different waveforms that we have been uh, talking about. So, we have uh, the three uh, different uh, waveforms which are uh, kind of uh, important. So, the first one is um, filter bank multicarrier on the left, then we have generalized uh, frequency division multiplexing and we have uh, uni unified filtered uh, multi-carrier, unified filter bank multi-carrier system. So, uh, FBMC as we have said, uh, it has uh, very good pulse shaping where each sub-carrier is linearly pulse shaped. So, you can see the first point of uh, difference or its characteristics, right. And uh, in case of GFDM, each subcarrier is circularly pulse shaped. So, that is where uh, one would compare against each other, right. So, that is the difference and we had also shown uh, the uh, diagram how things would transit from one to another. And uh, here what we find is that each subgroups are OFDM modulated and then filtered, ok. So, what we see in the first two it is uh, per sub carrier based whereas, in the last one it is group based and in OFDM it is for the entire set there is one filtering. So, this is kind of a trade off uh, between the uh, extremities which are shown in the left and OFDM. And uh, what we find for GFDM is that it is, uh, it is a block based transmission scheme. This is also that uh, what we have identified that it is a block based mechanism, a block based mechanism in the sense that not just one symbol, but multiple symbols are grouped together and a block is formed and a CP is added in front of the block. So, it is entire block which is processed, okay. whereas this is uh, symbol by symbol processing and uh, this is also symbol by symbol processing on the other hand. Uh, it is a generalized framework for waveform. Uh, this can be used for uh, translating to other things. I mean, uh, GFDM can be converted to other forms. The problem here is that the subcarriers become non orthogonal owing to the different pulse shapes in a manner that if we take the modulating matrix A, A armation that is not equal to identity. Right, that is what happens. So, there is uh, the matched filter receiver that when implemented uh, will not give uh, I mean interference free signals. So, there is a uh, lot of interference amongst the modulating signals, but it has several other advantages which we have discussed. When we look at uh, FBMC, the orthogonality among subcarriers is forced for AWGN and flat fading channel that is uh, the advantage. And uh, in this case, what we find is that uh, it, it may converge to FBMC as well as filtered OFDM depending upon how you configure the entire system. right? So, this is uh, again slightly different compared to the other two. Uh, in FBMC, there is no cyclic prefix. Uh, in GFDM, there is a cyclic prefix for the entire block. Here again, there is no CP. So, there is no CP for this. In case of uh, FBMC, uh, ISI is present in frequency selective channel and it is uh, not suitable for tactile internet. 
it is uh, flexible in terms of pulse shape. So, one can choose different pulse shapes and get different characteristics. This is flexible in terms of uh, the time frequency resource grid because we said it is a block based. So, one can reduce the number of blocks, one can increase the number of uh, sub bands in the frequency domain. So, basically a tile can be made in frequency and time uh, as one desires depending upon the application scenario. Right. One can also think of structures like this. So, it is very, very flexible waveform. If you look at today's uh, 5G NR, it is also flexible, but does not use GFDM, it uses a variant of OFDM. So, potentially uh, the framework is now laid whereby in the next generation uh, GFDM can uh, easily fit into the framework. This is uh, suitable for uh, tactile internet because you can make it small duration signal as well and short response time is also feasible. You can make wider subcarrier bandwidths, uh, short symbol duration. So, things are feasible in this. Um, this is also suitable for tactile internet. So, these are overall characteristics and uh, then we will get into the relative performance of each other. So, to look at the relative performance, um, we take a set of uh, sub a set of simulation parameters. So, where we have taken uh, 64 subcarrier for simulations it is it's just for a primary evaluation and uh, number of time slots is 5 that is a block based system. 16 core modulation is used, we did not go for QPSK uh, because um, QPSK detection can be done by means of uh, only phase differentiation. So, amplitude distortion is not going to affect the system much whereas, uh, if you take a 16 QAM system. So, in a 16 QAM system, your amplitude distortion is going to influence uh, significantly. So, we need not go to higher order systems, we could have gone to 64 QAM, but uh, it is not necessary because all the different effects are already captured in the 16 QAM. So, we found a mid path. Um, in, in the pulse shaping that is used for uh, GFDM system, it is RRC with uh, different role of factors, but we will be looking at this role of factors primarily. And uh, for OFDM also the role of factor is kept the same with RRC, for FBMC it is uh, FIDAS filter and uh, there are different filters, I mean equitable filter for uh, UFMC and so on and so forth. Um, CP length, um, channel length is made same as that exponential power delay profile just for the sake of simulations and evaluation performance. And these are the other two important parameters of subcarrier bandwidth and coherence bandwidth of the system that is used for evaluation. So, this is the first result that we see that is the BER performance okay, with ideal receiver. So, this is uh, something that means uh, when you take the BER performance with ideal receiver that means you assume perfect synchronization and all. all Right. So, with ideal channel information available, everything available, how do they perform? So, uh, what we find is that uh, in these uh, systems, the uh, SCFDMA, sorry, the, the SCFDMA system, okay, which is uh, sorry, the BIDFTM, BIDFT GFDM is here. Basically, this is the set of curves which identify that performance. So, it is basically this set of curves. Okay. So, we see that uh, it is the best performance in BER terms because uh, there is spreading an advantage and we have discussed this earlier. A quick step back you will find that BIDFTM uh, provides this one which we had described earlier provides significant diversity gain and here is the frequency domain spreading of the signal that helps us understand that across uh, frequency the signal is uh, spreaded. So, when it combined at the receiver it takes advantage of the compare of the combining and hence it provides the significant advantage relative to all other uh, waveforms. Okay. So, then uh, we look at the next waveform uh, which is uh, SCFDE. So, SCFDE is this waveform as you can see which is uh, yeah. So, single carrier frequency domain equalization. Uh, again uh, this also is uh, pretty good in, in terms uh, of the fact that you can have uh, the DFT spreading. If you would remember there is a DF 
OFT spreading followed by OFTM which is IFFT. So, if it is of the same size then they cancel out each other and you result in single carrier. If you add a cyclic prefix you can do frequency domain equalization and it retains the characteristics of single carrier. Uh, the extra advantage of SNR is because there is cyclic prefix per symbol whereas, here uh, there is per cyclic prefix per block. So, there is some reduction uh, of loss in SNR otherwise they would have the similar characteristics of performance. Okay. So, moving further uh, we see the next one uh, which is IF DMA that is interleaved frequency division multiple axis GFDM. Uh, this is this one which we have also described earlier uh, and uh, then we have uh, this one which is uh, localized allocation for GFDM and followed by this uh, we have SCFDMA with IFDMA that is uh, DFT spread OFDM okay, uh, with interleaving and <laughs> then we have DFT spread OFDM uh, with localized. So, that means uh, you have this DFT spreading blocks if you allocate them on the same sub on the corresponding sub carriers it is uh, localized whereas, uh, if you if you would uh, allocate one of them there, one of them there, one of them there that is kind of interleaved uh, division. So, there we see the performance that interleaving improves the performance right. So, again this is the interleaved which is the performance here, this is the localized which is the performance. And then uh, we move further uh, we see the GFDM system which is the cross if we follow this uh, that is here with 0 forcing receiver uh, which is matching with OFDM right. So, there is uh, no loss of performance in that sense and uh, then what we have is UFMC over here which is relatively worse compared to these performances and uh, finally, we have FBMC up there which loses its orthogonality that is what we had pointed out FBMC has the worst performance due to ISI induced in the wireless channel whereas, others can take care of it and in fact, uh, BIDFTM can provide you the highest amount of diversity as well as uh, SNR advantage compared to the other systems. Moving ahead uh, we take a look at the result where we have uh, 5 percent carrier frequency offset. So, that is kind of uh, small carrier frequency offset. Uh, that is present in the system. So, again uh, what we see is that uh, in, in this case also because it is already degraded here uh, things are only worse in case of uh, FBMC I mean this is uh, not better anymore, but if you just take CFO things would be different, but we have a uh, frequency selective fading channel. So, performance is obviously different. And uh, then what we see is that uh, GFDM with uh, zero forcing is most resilient compared to others. So, this uh, filtering and pulse shaping is uh, helping it to counter some of the carrier frequency offsets. And uh, as we go higher up what we see is that interleaved frequency division that is also GFDM. This is also GFDM which is here that is localized allocation and then we find OFDM over here. So, these are close to OFDM, but only slightly better and uh, then we see SCFDMA uh, which is affected by uh, carry frequency offset and uh, both of the versions and SCFDMA. So, all of these are worse in performance relative to OFDM which is worse relative to the various forms of GFDM and uh, then we see that EFMC is again up higher up which is already there. So, kind of uh, worse performance is already carried forward. So, it is already degraded by the channel conditions. Uh, in terms of uh, capacity evaluation uh, again uh, what we what we compare against is the uh, is the Raleigh fading channel capacity and then what we find is GFDM is again providing the the highest capacity uh, followed by OFDM and uh, this cap can be due to the CP loss. Uh, then we have uh, SCFDMA I mean these these all are pointed out over here and finally, at the bottom we have SCFDE. So, uh, what we see that uh, GFDM is uh, performing better in, in the frequency selective fading channel as well as under CFO uh, as well as uh, it has the highest capacity uh, capability that is spectral efficiency in bits per second per hertz compared to the all other schemes. 
Then uh, we move forward to the other uh, important uh, performance metrics which is the PAPR and we have described uh, the PAPR earlier and we have stated that uh, PAPR is important um, issue because when we are especially talking about the uplink that means uh, when we are talking about uh, sending signals from user equipment to the base station let us say right. So, you would you have a small power amplifier here relative to the one at the base station and you would like your slick signal to be as much uh, a compact in the amplitude form as possible. So, that you can operate near the saturation region and uh, you would be able to maximize the utilization of the power available at the user end. So, uh, that is why we would like to have waveforms which have low PAPR, uh, high PAPR is not desired because you will have to have a back off, back off means lower transmit power, lower transmit power means poorer coverage and uh, more wastage of battery especially of the handle devices. So, now if we compare all the schemes what we find is that again uh, FBMC is the uh, one with the highest peak to average power ratio compared to all other waveforms. So, uh, one may find some relevant papers which talks about uh, pulse shaping only uh, worsens the PAPR. So, uh, if you take rectangular pulse shape and do pulse shaping on top of that especially for multi carrier systems uh, things only become worse and that is what is reflected in FBMC system. We also see that GFDM by itself has worse performance because it also has pulse shaping on subcarriers. So, one uh, is actually not doing much in case of uh, which is followed by OFDM. So, one can think of OFDM as the uh, reference point because uh, this is kind of acceptable uh, is used and uh, remember this fact that in 5G uh, they are allowing OFDM to be used in the uplink direction also. Uh, while the SCFDMA is still allowed, although it is still allowed, uh, they are going for OFDMA in uplink, and uh, there used to be a very popular uh, standard known as WiMAX, which was competing with LTE at some point, and uh, WiMAX had OFDMA in uplink as well as in downlink, uh, so OFDMA in uplink and downlink, whereas in LTE there was uh, uh, SCFDMA. SCFDMA had lower PAPR, that was the primary reason. So, anyway OFDM can act as the benchmark in, in this in this system right. So, we can take this as the benchmark point and compare others. What we find is UFMC is only slightly better you know, one reason that uh, when you are grouping subcarriers uh, together then effective number of subcarriers could become less or you are kind of playing around with the phase factors with them. However, these uh, three or these few set of results uh, only show us that uh, um, things are only as good as OFDM or worse right. Things max can be as good as OFDM if you use the schemes by itself. And then we look at uh, some of the variants that uh, we have analyzed in our work and we will present it here. Uh, one of the first things that you will see is that the single carrier uh, or the SCFDMA right. So, SCFDMA with localized allocation is significantly lower than OFDM around uh, 2 dB benefit you can get in terms of PAPR and uh, then with interleaved allocation you get it even better that is here. So, this is uh, the first, this is the second, so this is the first, this is the second that we have just discussed and SCFD is uh, similar to the second scheme. So, this is the third scheme that we have discussed. So, more or less SCFD gives you a better performance than uh, OFDM systems that is quite expected uh, because you are having a single carrier like performance, but it is derived from OFDM. So, some of the reminiscent things would be providing you a higher uh, peak to average power ratio. Okay. So, then uh, we take a look at uh, the next thing that is uh, some variant of GFDM that is a localized uh, FDMA GFDM that means uh, you are doing some kind of an allocation which we have described earlier. So, that performance is coming over here uh, which is again uh, similar to number 1. So, this is 4 right this is 4 which is similar to number 1 ok. And then we take a look at uh, some of the other uh, GFDM based schemes uh, which is uh, IFDMA. So, IFDM is interleaved allocation. So, this one which is you can put it as number 5 and then you have uh, the sixth one 
uh, sorry this is this is number 5 and then you have the BIDFTM which is number 6. So, once again we find that BIDFTM uh, provides a huge reduction in peak to average power ratio and in fact, it has the best performance. So, it is a pre-coded version of OFTM which can reduce the PAPR uh, by a significant margin which can only provide better uplink capabilities. Uh, so, uh, with this uh, we can compare the different waveforms with important performance metrics. But then we move on to uh, another very, very important characteristics, um, which is the uh, out of band uh, spectrum leakage, right. And uh, that is one reason why the filtering has been uh, done on these different waveforms. So, what we see is uh, while uh, FBMC has been uh, relatively weak compared to all other uh, waveforms and the different metrics that we have been comparing, we find that it is the best scheme as far as out of band. Uh, spectrum leakage is considered. So, you can clearly see from the picture that uh, FBMC is basically this one okay, with the brown color. So, that is the FBMC uh, spectrum and FBMC spectrum is uh, having the very, very narrow transition region and uh, beyond that the uh, out of band is at the level of uh, nearly minus uh, 85 dB uh, with respect to the peak performance, so which is very, very good. So, it is the best in fact and no other scheme can achieve uh, an out of band uh, performance which is as good as FBMC. So, if, uh, if out of band uh, leakage is the most important criteria, then of course, FBMC is the one of choice, but of course, one has to remember the other losses that one has to bear with. Uh, under different conditions. So, if conditions are favorable in terms of flat fading, I mean ISI is not affecting the performance, then FBMC can be chosen to work uh, is within very, very narrow uh, bands when signal has to be fitted into such uh, available gaps. Uh, in this context, uh, what we see is that uh, these two groups of GFTM are relatively worse compared to FBMC. So, they are uh, not really as good as FBMC in, in that sense, uh, whereas again FBMC is uh, coming somewhere in between and this, this was expected while OFDM is somewhere up there. Okay. And uh, then we also have DFT spread OFDM also along with it. So, what we find is that uh, in, in this case um, FBMC has the best spectral characteristics and uh, I, we, we can rank FBMC as number 1 and uh, we can rank uh, F UFMC as number 2 and then you can rank uh, GFDM as number 3 and then we have OFDM. So, in that order I would put it like that right and of course, um, if you are uh, able to do some filtering on, on these then the performance would be somewhat better than what we are seeing in this particular picture. So, overall uh, what we see is that FBMC is very strong spectral characteristics, but worse in other terms, whereas uh, GFDM is better than OFDM in terms of spectral characteristics, uh, uh, but much worse than FBMC, but on the other counts it has a much, much better performance than the different uh, waveforms. So, now uh, when we look at uh, this particular result, uh, we have windowing is what we were just mentioning in the previous one. So, W stands for windowed uh, GFDM. So, now what we see that the outlook that was presented earlier has changed significantly. So, this result is the one for windowed GFDM okay. and uh, what we have here the next one is uh, this one is for windowed OFTM okay. and <clears throat> then we would also identify uh, this one as UFMC. Okay. So, that it is easier to read and uh, then we have here this one as GFDM in its original form and finally, 
uh, we write this one as OFDM. Right. So, we we have of course, not mentioned the best scheme which is FBMC which stands its ground. So, FBMC has not lost its position. So, again in order of ranking uh, what we see now is that uh, FBMC would be ranked number 1 in terms of out of band spectral performance okay. and then of course, uh, we have uh, windowed GFDM as number 2 and uh, then there is uh, a question on UFMC and windowed uh, OFDM because depending upon what we are looking at. So, while transition is faster for windowed OFDM, but uh, finally, it settles down at a higher level, it is, uh, of, but still it is less than minus uh, 70 dB. Okay. So, if 60 dB is acceptable, then this is not a problem. So, otherwise, uh, we would put them at uh, UFMC has a better performance over here, but transition band is a little bit wider. So, uh, we can still put UFMC as number 3, OFDM as number 4 or these can be swapped okay. and uh, then GFDM and finally, rank 6 goes to OFDM. So, this is one reason uh, why all these waveforms uh, people started investigating. So, what we see is OFDM clearly had a very poor out of band leakage performance while FBMC has the best uh, and OF and windowed GFDM is the second best and pretty close to FBMC. And uh, if we compare the other performance, uh, some variant of uh, GFDM is always having a better performance than all other schemes. So, what we can summarily conclude is that the different waveforms that were investigated, uh, they have improved upon the out of band, they have improved upon the PAPR. These two are very, very critical reasons why the different waveforms were analyzed most fundamental reasons. Along with them, there were two more reasons. One was the uh, carrier frequency offset resilience and then there was symbol timing offset resilience and these performance uh, are partially reflected only in CFO. Uh, we, are, we have not represented the STO performance, but these are available in different papers and one can look at them. Uh, these performances are important because uh, that would characterize the capabilities of these different waveforms uh, in terms of uh, high Doppler tolerance as well as asynchronous operation tolerance. So, um, we can compare, we can take up the different scenarios and see how they perform against each other and choose the appropriate solution. So, if uh, a flexible structure is available or if a flexible structure is uh, feasible, then one can switch between the different waveforms or they might be able to intermingle or they may be able to stay with each other uh, with a certain amount of performance capabilities. Uh, we, we see a, a chart of different uh, requirements kind of here, we have uh, out of band emission, we have BER performance, we have uh, PAPR, we have resilience to carrier frequency offset and then we have spectral efficiency as the different uh, KPIs and we have the whole different set of uh, waveforms in this axis, right? the names are there. Uh, what we find is that uh, FBMC has very low out of band which is desired and uh, BER performance is uh, very good for BIDFT, MGFDM, uh, PAPR wise also this is very good. right? Uh, resilience uh, to carrier frequency offset, it is not that strong, but GFDM is, is stronger and uh, spectral efficiency wise, uh, what we find is that uh, GFDM is kind of very good in that sense. So, uh, what we conclude is that there are various conditions under which different waveforms are performing better and there is no one single waveform uh, which outperforms all others in all quarters. So, this is something to be remembered and hence uh, there is still some miles to be covered before there is a clear winner uh, which can be identified. So, uh, in this particular thing, uh, we have identified with the, with the marks like HR indicating uh, uh, highly recommended and uh, NR is not recommended. Uh, indicating the different waveforms and the different performance, uh, different evaluation or different uh, performance metrics, 
which would be working out. So, what we conclude is uh, we stated just now that different waveforms has different capabilities and um, with some more additional work uh, we think that uh, we might be able to come up uh, with waveforms uh, which would satisfy the different conditions uh, in very good manner. So, that you have a newer version which uh, provides much better benefit than OFTM had been providing and uh, we would expect such waveforms to be part of the sixth generation communication system over here and uh, in the next lecture we will start discussing about the propagation conditions which will create us uh, which will provide us with sufficient uh, platform to discuss the different MIMO schemes and understand their performance uh, before talking about a uh, few more issues uh, related to the uh, fifth generation communication system. Thank you.